I guess some people bought homes in different parts of uh, around New York and didn't consider the Wi-Fi uh, availability. They must have bought them a long time ago. Either that or they did consider the Wi-Fi availability and oh. chose places that didn't have it. Um, I remember when I was at Young and Rubicam, they actually published a little book of everybody's contact information uh, from the board of directors down to about my level. And um, I remember looking one day when in complete boredom at the area codes for the weekend houses uh -huh. and realizing how it was my first introduction to how important various people were because the farther away they were, um, you know, the, the weekend houses that you had to take a plane to, it's like, well, no, that's, that's a pretty, that's gotta be a pretty serious executive because. Yeah. All right. I'm going to start broadcasting because that'll let the attendees in the room. Okay. And, um, I think 60 West 76th street is first. Okay. I have the slides, um, uh, ready to go. I appreciate the, um, the other one, we actually heard a particular, a single resolute, uh, a single apartment on. The other one is, it's called the, um, the White House. It's actually at 86th Street in Central Park West. Mm -hmm. That's 262 Central Park West. Right. I remember it very well because it was in the first Fame movie. Um, and um, the apartment we saw was right above the, um, the main entrance. Um, and it was one of those ones where originally it had multiple light and the building basically is all one over one. Um, so apropos of our CB8 colleagues, it's one over one aluminum clad windows. Um, and um, anyway, so it, it's interesting that that will be uh, coming back to us for a master plan. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did see that they had uh, approvals on other window uh, replacements. And I wondered why they didn't do a master plan then, but it- They told us that they were working on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and indeed, and that was one of the reasons why I thought we shouldn't approve the last one. Um, um, so we'll see what they have to say this time around. Okay. Looks like Mary Derricks is with us. Hey, Mary. Hi. Hi, Hi Mary. <laughs> Which one are you here for? Um, of, uh, 60 uh, West 76th. It's a ramp. Okay. All right, I'm just going to go yeah. ahead and promote and marry the panelist. Mark, is, you have, is that Mark, you, you have Doug? Hey, it is. It's, it's me from my work phone. Okay, so I'm going to rename you Doug so we know who you are. Hi, Doug. Thank you. Hi, Susan. Hi. Hi, Susan. Oh, Susan. wow, we got all, the, got all the big guns tonight. We got Ward Dennis on, I guess, on the other one, right? Susan, would you take minutes? I was going to ask Josh, but he's not going to be here. OK. All right. Um. I'm sorry, I've just done it too many times recently. Is that okay? I'm the little tag. No problem. Okay, no thanks. Problem. Thank you. Josh won't be here. Kay won't be here. Maybe Peter won't. I'll have to ask. Do uh, we have a quorum? Well, we need, we need Madge and Jay. You need Madge and Jay, right? Because David's here if you want. Yeah, okay. Can he take minutes? He loves taking minutes. He's the secretary of the Lotus Club. He's <laughs> okay. It doesn't say any place that Hi, I can. 516 uh, blank 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 773. Who's that? Uh, this is Katie from Olshan, um, representing ownership for the 60 West 76th Street project. Why can't I rename you? Huh, I can't rename you. Okay, you're going to remain 516. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Mary, uh, if you look at the attendees, uh, which of them are people that are on your team for tonight? Um, nobody yet. The, uh, well, um, uh, Katie, um, uh, John Gordon is coming, and I don't see him here yet. 
I just see four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Is that right? Uh, I've got eight now, but yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, uh, Katie is with you? Yes, and uh, John Gordon is coming, the architect. What's Katie's last name? I'm sorry. What's Katie's last name? Uh, Katie. It's, it's Poppy, P-O-P-P-E. Got it. Thanks. Hey, Jay. I take minutes for you, but then I can't share the screen to uh, show the show the no, drawings. No, I'm going to ask Jay. I'm going to ask uh, Jay. He's got to be unmuted. Hey, Madge. So we do have a quorum. You have a quorum. Hi, Madge. Are you able to unmute Jay, Mark? I, oh, there is. Hi, Jay. Yes. I need you to take uh, minutes tonight, okay? Okay. I appreciate. Thank you. And we can get started, right? Yep, you have a quorum. Go ahead. We do have a quorum. We uh, are we've been missing Josh and Kay, and we're uh, hopefully Peter can connect, but he's out of town. So let's start with uh, the application for 60 West 76th Street, please. My name is Michelle Parker. I'm co-chair of the committee, the preservation committee. My uh, other co-chair is uh, Kate Carpin, but he's out of town. And oh. we have um, everybody else want to introduce yourselves from the uh, committee? Susan oh. Schwartz. Susan Schwartz. Madge. Madge Rosenberg. Jay. Jay Adolf. We have uh, Doug. Doug McGowan. And of course, our esteemed chair, Mark Dillon. Also known as the IT guy. Good evening. IT guy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So uh, 60 West 76th Street, who is making the uh, presentation? Um, uh, John Gordon, who seems to be having trouble with his uh, video. Uh-huh. All right. Give um, me one second. Mm -hmm. Is he the architect? Yes. And I'm the preservation consultant, Mary Derex. Oh, I see the... There he is. Mary, how do you spell your last name? D I E R I C K X. It should be on screen. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's got it. And there's John. We met Mary through our esteemed former colleague, Misha Hunter. Yes. Uh, so, shall I pull up the screens and we get going? Uh, what do you yeah, want, Mary? Please. Yeah, please. That'd okay. be great. Um, so this I'm is sorry. For the AD, this is the application for the ADA compliant ramp. Yes. Okay. We made a, um, a newer version of the presentation. Am I allowed to share that? Yeah. Uh, give me one second and then y the answer will be yes. Thank you. Uh, give it a try now. John, is it not behaving itself? No. Oh, wait. Hold on. There. I had a lot of things open, so I had to find the right one. Okay. I think I have it. Can everyone see this? All right. There you mm -hmm. go. I have my pointer here, which I'll click and direct it to something. So uh, if you allow me, I'll get started. Yes, sir. Uh, so this is 60 West 76th Street. It's a. Um, uh, building located at the corner of uh, 76 and Columbus Avenue, also known as 331-339 uh, Columbus Avenue. And this this side here is Columbus Avenue. These are commercial storefronts. And this side is 76th Street. 
Ooh, so and this is what we're going to be presenting to you is the entry, the residential entrance to the residential portion of the building, which is on, on 76th Street. And um, this photo is from Google because the uh, building actually has scaffolding on it now. So we thought this would be useful to at least show generally what it looks like without scaffolding. So that gave us a little bit of a challenge. So we took a picture of what it looks like, you know, just a, you know, a few days ago, we took this picture covered in scaffolding. So it's a little hard to show you the character of the building, but that's it as of today. Um, so we'll go to the next page. This building is uh, located in the Upper West Side, um, Central Park West Historic District. It was built, as it says it on the map, uh, 1892 to 1894. Architect was Henry, Henry Anderson and Renaissance Revival style building. So our project is to address the entrance to the residential to make it ADA accessible. Existing steps are here at the sidewalk. There's one step and there's another one. It's a little hard to distinguish, but there is another one right before the doors here. So that was our task to figure out how to get people in this building. So I wanted to um, sort of ask if Mary wants to present any more historical points at this stage of the presentation before I get into, you know, our thought process for the design. Um, you know, John, I think that uh, what I'd like to do is skip ahead to the, uh, to the, to the pictures. Okay. And then you can come back to the design. Should I do the ones at the very end? No, the, um, after the drawings. <laughs> So I'll jump to yeah. well, start with this All one. right, so that's um, uh, 1940. It's very hard to see, but those little uh, little white squares are the, um, the are the piers to the uh, to the railing. Okay, right. John. So just let me interrupt. We were only able to find a map from these, these historic tack photo uh, of excuse me a photo from these historic photos of one of the neighboring buildings that happened to clearly show something in front of. of 60 West 76th Street, and we zoomed it in here. So this is just a zoom in of that portion of the photo, and you can see what we're trying to show you here is this part. So should I go to the next one? Yes. Um, these uh, these piers are um, very altered, uh, the, and uh, this is what's going to be altered some more for the uh, for the ramp. Um, uh, they have had many resurfacings. The latest is a kind of a thick concrete with a bunch of uh, aggregate in it. That bottom part there is, uh, is not original. There's nothing about these. I'm not sure if these are actually original because I looked at a lot, lot of flats buildings, which is what this is. And um, I found only one um, uh, freestanding fence pier that was uh, masonry and it was a column. Um, so these may not, even be original. They, they, it's, the fence is definitely not original. Now they've been very, very altered. It's, who knows what they looked like originally, even if they, if, if they existed in 1894. Um, but this is, this is the condition now. Um, John, would you move on to the next one? Oh, well, the next one is the same with the uh, curb and the, and the, uh, the curb has been resurfaced, um, painted um, all over time. And I think, John, that's probably the end of it. Yeah, as far as pictures, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think that just gives you the story. The, the entrance, as is very typical, has been altered. Um, uh, fences are often altered, and um, this one is too. And John, I think this would be a good time to go back into the, uh, the proposal. Yeah, so again, back to the front entrance, we just sort of want to show you what we have here again, just to remind you, I said there's a step here and there's a step here. So <coughs> I wanted to find a way to get in a wheelchair into this building. Um, and so, and they're also, just so you understand on these sides, behind this railing and behind this railing, there's areaways. So these drop off here. There happens to be these odd little platforms that are higher than the, the curves, these two. And, uh, Oh, I want to point out too that this photo is not a today photo because again, there's scaffolding there. So this is a bit of a, you know, like a, one of these photos from Google where we were able to get it without scaffolding. So you see the full um, 
uh, entrance in one shot without any interruptions other than a couple people. So what anyway, are those you, things? Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. What are they for? These platforms, oddly, we all we noticed, we don't know for sure, but they're right below these oh, two ladders. Sure. Fire yeah. scan. But the odd thing is, I don't know if you can tell, but if you look very closely, they're blocked off with little bars horizontally. So I assume so no one just goes and sits in there to block people. But if you were coming down the fire escape, it'd be kind of a trip hazard to get out. So I think it's just there to stop people from using it. And it's kind of ignoring the safety of the fire escape. But otherwise, if these weren't here, I would assume these ladders would drop you into the areaway, which is not a good idea. So that's all I can think of. So our proposal, well, we, we looked at this and we thought if we had to do some sort of you know, lift or something, it would be um, pretty hideous, honestly. So we were proposing to do a, a ramp. So that's, we wanted to come up into to this level of the lobby, but to do that, we need to extend this step out in order to get a ramp up to the higher of those two steps. So you're basically two steps higher. We were able to negotiate it so it's about 13 inches of increase from the sidewalk up to second step. So we did a quick rendering of what we're proposing based on that prior photo. And so we're proposing to take that platform out that was over here and in a sense, just lower it and adjust its size so that it becomes our landing. And we're infilling the areaway and the ramping up to this level. And then that step, as I had mentioned, is pulled out to here. So you just walk up two steps here and then the ramp lets you through here. The, the reason we have to uh, present to the commission is we have to modify this here right here because its depth is too, it's too tight of a space behind it between this and this. So that's you know one of our requests is to change that. And then of course, since we're building this step out, we have to fill this in covering the existing stone here with new material. And our goal is to use a stone that matches. So, um, so that's the basics of the proposal. Of course, there's railings at the ramp. We had to put a um, portion of the guard across this way because the areaway still goes, I don't know if it's over here, there's the areaway still to protect people from falling. We're gonna cut the curb here. We're basically gonna, in a sense, cut the curb and a portion of the existing railing out and use it to fill in this part. And so this railing is pretty much staying as is other than the cut we're making to make this landing. And then you just go through and we'll attach the handrail for the, for the ramp itself back here. Um, that's, and then we have to do an actuator button which we'll see in the other drawings as we, as I show, go through the presentation which should be along the wall here. So, so then we did the uh, drawings to show like the existing condition and the proposed. So existing condition here is the, with that platform which we're removing, converting this to a landing here ramp was up here, it would the second step was pulled forward. Jay, you have a question? Yeah, you, so you're modifying, as we're looking at the entrance, this uh, concrete pier to the left will be, uh, you're, you're cutting away some of the depth. Yeah, I'll show you that in the next right. couple of slides. Yeah, so, okay, I get that. And the one on the right, though, is going to stay the same. Yeah, I don't. We don't need to change that one. So we would it leave it. I, just curious if aesthetically, it, it would be better to modify the one on the right as well, so that at least uh, there's the symmetry of the the two piers. Okay. Yeah, let me let me move to the uh, next slide. We did this doesn't show both piers, but this shows you if you're standing, you know, close and you're looking in. It's an axonometric. Mm -hmm. This is sort of the condition of we, the amount we would remove of the back of this pier. So it's it's a little more than half because we need to get a three foot clearance between right. the pier of the of the building. No, I, I understand why you're yeah why you have to reduce the depth of the pier to get the access. From the ramp, my question is: Isn't it going to look weird, for want of a better uh, technical architectural term, to have one narrow pier on the left and one wide pier, you know, one pier on the right that's 
twice as uh, wide yeah. as. Yeah, I mean, maybe especially maybe since something. they're not original to begin with, why not make them symmetrical? Yeah, we don't know. They're certainly altered. We we just don't know if they're original in there somewhere or not. I mean, there may be some core of brownstone somewhere in there. Um, I, it's a good suggestion. Uh, sometimes the other way to go in preservation is to uh, uh, make the changes you have to, but not make the changes you don't have to. So it's kind of like one way or the other yeah. you know, on this. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I understand that as a matter of general practice, not altering historical uh, material structure, et cetera, if you don't have to. But in this case, number one, nobody knows if they're original. And number two, aesthetically, it just seems it would be a lot, uh, lot better to make them symmetrical. Can I just walk over? Okay. Okay. Guys, it, it, I don't this, excuse me one second. I'm about to move from an iPad to my PC, which is now available. So give me can a we, second. Can we move forward? Yep. So the, we just did some plans. This is the existing condition showing what we're moving, which is really just this portion here and the new ramp. We're you know, removing that platform. So it's just the removals. So this is the, just the proposed plan showing the new landing, the ramp from here to here. And then the, the removal, the portion of that pier, the back portion, and you can see its relation size wise to the, the other one that is not proposed to be modified. And then, well, we showed you this picture already, um, the historic um, tax photos. Again, just recapping this real quick. These are just a series from, of different years of these piers and how they've been changed so many times. This 2009, 2011, 2014, 2017, and current. Um, these were we were able to find online various resources photos. These are all current photos. You can see the condition here of where we would remove this ironwork, cut this off, and that's where the um, ramp would go. And then these were the close-ups we were just explaining. That's the curb, which a portion of which over here will be cutting, but we believe it's just a concrete curb because it's just has this, it's just painted on a, a coating. So see it's stripping off. And this is a granite that, um, and this is a close-up of the granite step. So we'd like to get a granite that matches. Our suppliers are very confident they can get a match to it. So we feel good about that. Um, and we will get the sam actual sample to share with everyone. And Can I ask you about the area way? Yes, you may. What happens to the area way in the area that will be the ramp? Well, it, we're covering it, so it won't be open anymore um, to the sky, but we're not doing anything below other than, I mean, it'll still be open to the air of the outside, but it's just mm -hmm. going to be covered. Okay. The ramp will Thank fill you. the whole thing. Thank you. So the ramp would fill from this side of this curve all the way to the building wall. So if I were to go back to the plan quickly, there's still a portion of that areaway open back here, but it's just where the landing starts to the to the end here. It's closed down. So, and this there's an areaway over here too on the other side, but we're not obviously not touching anything over there. So. Right. So jumping back, we have to put an actuator button so that when someone is in a wheelchair, they can push a button to have the door automatically open. So we're gonna those are. Interior features are going to have operators on the door hardware. Our goal is to keep everything with the door, the hinges exactly the same. We're just going to add hardware to it. And then we just have some details. I, I, I'm sorry, but what, what happened with the discussion on making the piers symmetrical? Well, we just ran Nothing. through the rest of the, yeah, we just ran through the rest of the presentation. Okay. So our Would you consider making them making the one the uh, pier on the right as you enter the same depth as the uh, width as the depth as the pier on the left? Dale, could I jump in on this? Sure. sure. Thanks. Um, I'm with Jay and would actually go maybe even a step farther, um, which is to say that um, not only do I think that the piers should be symmetrical. Um, but that 
the replacement of the fire escape landing ought to be uh, balanced out. Um, the fire escape obviously is a retrofit. The building is older than the building code that would require the fire escape. Um, so um, my guess is that that was an improvisation. Um, and so in order to balance out the, the aesthetics as well as the function, um, what I would think would make a, a world of sense is to make both piers, trim both piers as you need to on the, on the east side of the entrance and then extend the landing to cover what is now that cockamamie uh, iron thing um, so that the fire escape lands on something more solid than a catwalk um, and have that come to the street as well, minus the trip hazard, as you said. Um, and truthfully, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm almost indifferent about the piers entirely because there's no way that that material that's on there now is original or appropriate to that building. Um, it ought to be, it, it ought to be some other material. So, and I'm not, I'm not in the least bit worried about the dimensions of it. Um, in terms of your cutting it, um, I do agree with Jay that it ought to be symmetrical, and I think it ought to be something much more in keeping with the facade or some radical departure with some complementary material. So, if you wanted to make them out of granite. Um, I'm not recommending that, but that you know, it's another element. It's another material that's already there, um, or to make them out of or coat them out of brownstone in some way to match the current um, uh, first floor treatment. Um, all of those would be superior to what you've got there now, and I don't think that, with the exception of my recommendation about the fire escape landing, I don't think it's 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 any more expensive than anything else you're looking at. Mark, uh, Mark, just so I understand, you're suggesting getting rid of that platform, which I agree with, by the way. And so you would be extending the fence uh, to the pier, basically. No, what I would be suggesting, because they do still need to have the landing for the fire escape above. So what I would do is extend, well, extend why the- Why do they? I mean, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna have it on the other side anymore. You're just gonna have they do have it on the other side. The fire escape on the other side goes down to the to the proposed ramp. Right, to the end, to the end, beginning of the proposed ramp. So why well so I, the other fire I, escape I guess you have to have some base there. Yeah, the fire escape to go somewhere. Why not just fill it in or make it concrete and extend the fence, which would be almost symmetrical with the ramp. Well, I think, just if I may, this is concrete and it might not be great in this photo, but these are concrete landings. They are. Yeah. I are think they okay? Have... So you already okay. have a landing. This okay. Why not just extend the fence? I, Jay, I didn't understand that to be concrete. It looked like a catwalk to me, so I agree okay. with you. Okay. But I don't think it would be proper to put a fence across here if that's what you're saying, because if someone comes down, then how do they get out? Huh? You take away the fence on the east side of that ramp and have it go to the same landing that the front door yeah. goes to. Oh, this one. Just take that. Yeah. Piece. Right. Correct. Yeah. In fact, just pick it up, lift it out, and put it against the wall, against the remaining railing, and you. Yeah, you just take this out and put it across here instead, or something. Just a little bit. Something of like that. Iron work, and yeah, that's true. It'll probably look better. Yep. A simple change. Good. I mean, I, I think we're open to coating with brownstone uh, as an option for these piers. And I mean, I, obviously, we'd want to discuss this with the landmarks staff that we're working yeah. I noticed that in the series of pictures you showed earlier, there was one from 2017 that seemed to indicate that they were uh, brownstone. No, it was oh, just yeah. a different stucco coating. Yeah, I think it's, it's okay. not really proper. It's just that one. So that's just. Stuck it's just brown. Okay. Yeah, it does, it does well, frankly, it looked better than what's there now. <laughs> but yeah, if you could do a stucco coating, uh, I don't know what the mechanics or construction involves, but if it could match uh, that. I, the other, I, I would just want to ask the another more radical, you know, solution to these two peers is that. You just get rid of both of them and you just yeah. put a simple but beautiful iron sort of 
newel posts on each one. It's really simple to do. And that would it, be much more in keeping with yes. the Upper West Side railings, as far as I'm concerned. Right? I think so. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, if the piers were finished uh, in a better way, in a brownstone way, that uh, I don't mind them at all. But your suggestion would be, I think, equally appropriate. So. I think both are possible and we, we should probably discuss it with the- LPC. So what do we do in terms of um, an ultimate um, resolution? Are we, um, are, are, are we getting a commitment to either um, reducing the right hand pier and coding it in an appropriate um, finish uh, and or getting rid of them in our what what's what should we what should we assume is your representation as to what's going to happen? Yeah, John and, and Katie, I think that we can and should at minimum commit to um, recoding them and cutting them both and cutting them. Well, the cutting, I, I don't know. John, I think has to think about that one. Well, well, I have to do that if you're going to take the fence away that's now on the uh, well, fire, uh, uh, fire escape landing. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to pursue this other idea of just modifying this so you can go this way, then this would this space is too narrow to get through. Right. It's like you ours. Have to. So well, so you'd have to cut it in. Right. That, I think that proposal assumes you're doing the cut the same way on this yes. side. You know, right. this guy. So right. that would be the consistency. They're both cut. And I don't think it's a big deal to coat them. I mean, it's, they're already going to, once they modify this one, they're going to have to do some masonry work on it anyway. So they may as well coat it and they could just coat this one too. So it's not a, a difficult thing, but um, I'm open to it. I, Katie, how do you feel about it? Do you have a feeling one way or another? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I really just, I'm hoping to get this done as quickly as possible. It's a human rights issue. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we'll agree to, I, I guess, kind of whatever it takes so that, um, you know, we can get the ramp up so the, the tenant in the wheelchair um, can access the building a lot easier. So um, whatever is needed. Okay. So I think that we're, we're all, you know, on the proposer's side, we're all flexible with this willing to take your guidance and, and of course want to talk to the LPC staff that's working with us about this and get their input on it. So, but I, I mean. Susan, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just, I think these, these suggestions are great. And it seems like if you code it in the matching color, it'd be less obvious that the, um, that they are not original. So I think that would blend in better. And I, I really agree with this symmetry issue. Yeah. On the uh, match. Yes, I, I agree with all of that, but I think if you have someone who has a disability in the building and needs a wheelchair, couldn't you do this as it is right now and ongoing do the rest of the work, like cutting down those stanchions and, and painting them? That could be done once the, the ramp is in so the person who needs it can have it. Yeah, but I don't think it's actually too much extra time and work once they're making the change to the one to get the ramp in. They could, they could do the other work in just a few extra days. That's my, okay. my feeling. And and going LPC, in my experience, every time we propose something, they don't want you to come back with another proposal. So right. we want to execute the whole thing. Even yeah. if it's phased, and part of it's done and then a little bit's done later, we want to get exactly. it approved That's in one shot. So we don't have to go back before them and ask again. Yeah, you're right. How I long think it, you, I'm if sorry, I may, I think at this point, it's up to us to uh, fashion a resolution mm -hmm. uh, conditional on what we decide are uh, the changes uh, that, that we all seem to agree on. And if there's you know, two alternatives that we consider acceptable, just condition our approval on e either one, either one construct or uh, the alternative. Sounds right to me. So Mark, you wanna help us with the resolution with the conditions? 
So well, first, we... I think you got Susan's hand, and then I think we just Sorry. ought to double check to make sure that there's nobody from the community that wants to be heard. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I'm just curious about the um, the expediency of this because we don't have another full board meeting until you know September. So what September. happens in this process? Yeah, September. So oh. I'll be glad they, to answer that. Uh, essentially, um, LPC will probably not wait for us to have our full board meeting. Cool. So um, this will be one of those instances in which we go down to LPC with a committee resolution and yeah. whoever it is that presents at LPC will make that clear. Um, and it'll, it'll come up for a vote in September just to ratify what we do as a committee um, just for our good practices because either LPC will agree with us or they won't. But either way, we should be internally consistent with our own procedures. Yeah. Great. As, I mean, long we, as, as long as we're not holding it up, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We're we, scheduled we, for August. Yeah. You're serious. August. Yeah. We have we have a negotiated understanding with LPC that on on a project that we consider significant enough uh, to require full board, we request same, and they usually honor it. In this particular case, since we we all have an interest in getting this done. So whoever uh, whoever the person or persons are that need it, uh, we certainly shouldn't do that. Uh, so as Mark said, we'll, we'll submit a uh, committee resolution mm -hmm. and either one of the co-chairs or whatever will go to the LPC and, and, uh, and represent us. So I think yep. we're, I think we're fine. Yeah, and just to close the loop on that, uh, it was Jay who negotiated, or I guess Jay and Gabby who negotiated that with LPC, so bravo. And I concur that this would not be a, uh, not be one of the ones where I would hold it up no. for a full board vote. I um, No, definitely not. And even if it weren't the case that there's somebody who's handicapped right. in the I building. Agree, I agree, Mark. Would, yeah, okay. Um, so we all uh, agree with Michelle, that. you wanna see if there's uh, anybody in the audience? I don't think so, but you can, all right, anybody from the public want to say anything about this application? Way to do that is to raise your hand. The way you raise your hand is you put up your uh, participant screen and then on, on the bottom of your participant screen, there should be a little blue hand to raise. If you're calling in by phone and wanna be heard, you raise your hand by pressing star nine. And I didn't ask if Doug wanted to say anything. Doug, you're still with us, right? I'm here. I think the uh, proposal that we're uh, beginning to flesh out is appropriate. Thank you. All right, Mark, you see any raised hands? I don't, but I don't have control of the, of the screen right now. Uh, John does. Oh, I do. Uh, how do I check that? I'm <laughs> sorry. Go to the top. There should be a bar that says a red bar that says stop share. I don't see any, I don't see any raised hands. Okay, I stopped it. I didn't want the thing to go away. Do I have to give control back over to you, Mark? Uh, I, I've now got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, I think you're ready to propose a resolution. Okay. So we'll accept the uh, uh, plan with the uh, following modifications. And I would, uh, I mean, I, I would make the approval conditional. Yeah, the approval on, conditioned on upon fulfilling one, it sounds like we have two options. The first option is to remove both peers. Is that one option? Well, it's the, 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 um, the conditions are one, that you make the peers symmetrical, whether out of masonry or replacing them with an appropriate, uh, with, with, a, uh, with a metal um, finishing pier uh, that would um, be reflective of the Upper West Side community. And so, um, and have them be symmetrical okay. or retain them as, retain them as masonry and have them coated in, an, in a brownstone-like uh, material. And then to, um, and then to, um, and then the other option is to extend the new landing to uh, align with, the, and the fence to align with the other fire escape landing. So it all appears to be 
symmetrical and in the same material. Is that about right, Jay? Yeah, I, so, so those are cumulative, I think, Mark. Uh, do we A little want, bit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, do we want to, we, number one, we, we all agree definitely that the piers have to be symmetrical, either in, in their current masonry construction, but narrowed so that they're equally, uh, equally narrow, or uh, I just flesh out for me the, the possible uh, so, replacement. So narrow. I thought that John, I thought that John had to, or you, you originally had something about urns. Oh, I didn't hear urns. Oh, no, iron. 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 Uh, iron. Arms. My mistake. Iron work. Iron. So iron work. Yeah. Basically, an extension of the railings, I guess. Yeah, symmetrical right. iron work. Okay, I mean, I'm fine with with making a condition on either or. Yeah. Me too. Well, I don't vote, but go ahead. But do we have to? Don't do we have to say if they retain the piers? Oh, we already said they have to be the same color. Right, the same depth. Yeah. And also to recoat them to an appropriate brownstone uh, color. Basically. Okay. And does all the railing look the same as the current railing? The, the current railing's being reused. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the current railing's fine. I mean, I'm just saying it's all it's all consistent, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, and why don't you take a vote? All right. Um, all those in favor of the resolution as written and revised? Yeah, just raise your hand. We have, uh, or I can call Susan. Yes. 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 Jay. Yes. Doug. Yeah. Madge. And uh, neither Peter nor Josh nor Kay are here. Uh, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, zero, a uh, five. Anyone opposed? No. Uh, or non-committee board members in favor. Aye. So that's one zero zero zero. The resolution as amended passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to your August date at LPC. Okay. And Thank uh, you. keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks. By the way, it was a lovely design. Very, very yeah. appropriate to that building. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Everybody stay safe. Yep, mm -hmm. you too. Take care. Good night. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Okay. The uh, next application is 262 Central Park West. This is for a master plan governing the future installation of windows. And yeah, that's good. No, hi, uh, this is Ward Dennis. I'm uh, one of the presenters. Uh, Mark, could you please uh, uh, make Kevin Daly and Samantha Johnson panelists. Samantha will be handling the presentation and Kevin and I will be speaking. And then if you could also make Mark Picard and Sarah Schur speakers or can allowed I, to speak as it were. Uh, oh, let's just make them Lord, all can I Can I get okay. those names yeah. again? Those names they they will pop the up on the screen now, Jay. So, oh, okay. Um, Kevin Daly, okay. And I, I will I will do formal introductions too, Jay. Thank you. Okay. Samantha. While we're at it, uh, Stephen Stoker, are you a member of the community or? Yes, uh, Stephen Stephen can be admitted. He's he's part of the uh, uh, board. We're a small group, so I'll promote everybody. Okay. And then um, uh, two hundred one uh, blank 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 zero one zero. Can you yeah. let us know who you are? Yes, that's Steve Scholar. Uh, it's also Steve Sculler? Okay. Yes, that's me. I've, I've, I've dialed in, so it's a better connection. Oh, okay. And I represent the board, as does Mark Picard. Very good. And then 917-749? Uh, that's, uh, that's Kevin Daly. That's also Kevin Daly. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and again, my phone signal is a lot better than my uh, internet signal right now. Um, Very good. Uh, Samantha's last name? <clears throat> Johnson. Johnson. It's showing on my screen as Samantha Joe. 
Um, I think we're all here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening again, everyone. So uh, my name is Ward Dennis with Higgins Quays Barth and Partners. Uh, we're the preservation consultants for 262 Central Park West. Uh, my colleague Sarah Scher is here as well. Uh, Kevin Daly and Samantha Johnson from Walter B. Melvin Architects are the project architects. Uh, and Mark Picard and Stephen Scholar are representing the board for the building. Uh, so, uh, Samantha, can you put the presentation up? Can we spell Stephen's last name, please? Oh, I got it. Uh, sure. Scholar, nope. I, okay. I got it. There we go. So I, you, uh, you all have uh, seen prior applications for windows on this building. Uh, and I understand that on uh, past applications, you've asked why there isn't a master plan here. Uh, that is exactly what we're here for, is to present a proposal for a master plan governing future installation of windows. Uh, it's, I think you'll see it's a very well-designed master plan proposal for one over one double hung windows, replicating historic brick molds, reinstating the architecture of the larger openings and providing for a uniform approach uh, going forward in the future. Uh, so the building itself, 262 Central Park West, it's a 15 story apartment building designed in 1928 by Sugarman and Berger. Uh, it occupies the full block from 86th Street on the left to 87th Street on the right with three street frontages uh, and a total of 796 windows on a primary facade. Uh, so we have a lot of windows and as you can see, there have been a lot of approaches to windows on this building over the years. Um, it's, a, it's a very restrained in design building, but the, uh, the hodgepodge of windows, the cacophony of windows uh, takes away, I think, from that restraint and, and from the overall design. Uh, it's primarily a mix of one over one uh, aluminum windows, a lot of which predate designation, and uh, single pane tilt and turn windows also predating designation. Uh, you, we will also see that the, the changes to the tripartite windows in particular at the corners has been a, has been a big loss to the architecture of the building. Um, and many of the existing double hung windows, because they do exist, pre predate designation, they don't have the kinds of profiles and dimensions that we would typically see on a landmarks approved window. Uh, so replacing all of these, this mix of modern windows will allow a return to a more uniform fenestration pattern in a more timely manner. Uh, and uh, as you'll see, the original windows on the building were six over six. We are proposing one over one. Uh, we think that that will, among other things, it will lead to a more timely replacement of windows people won't hang on to their uh, one over one windows uh, in favor of uh, uh, more dividing lights. So uh, we think that that will lead to a, a quicker adoption of the master plan than doing a six over six. Are there, um, any, are there any six over six? There are no the historic building? windows left on the building. I'm sorry? There are no historic windows left on the building. Okay. Um, that's actually the next slide. <laughs> oh, okay. The next, uh, Samantha. Second. It says sharing is paused. It won't let me advance. Oh, hmm. here we go. Can you all see that? Nope. It didn't uh, move. Okay. One second. And we're still in the building. Tell you what, I'm, um, I'm, I'll jump in and do it from my end. Okay. Um, oh, can I ask of the 796 windows, how many are you replacing? So this is a master plan, which will govern future replacements. So as tenants, uh, or as owners are replacing their windows in the future, they can go to the master plan. As long as they're following the master plan, they don't have to go to a public hearing. They don't have to come back to the community board. Uh, it's all been in essence pre-approved so long as 
they do what the master plan says. Right, but of all, every one of these windows is going to be replaced or there are some that have already been replaced by the prior, from your prior applications that won't be replaced this time around or in the future? Well, so this time around could be any time from now, theoretically till the end of time. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, oh, it, probably over the course of some years, they would be replaced as, uh, as tenants, as, as owners sell their units or as owners want to upgrade their units or as these older windows and some of these windows are uh, 20 or 30 years old, uh, that's about the full lifespan of an aluminum window. That so, was gonna be my next question. Um, but th there is there is no timetable on which the whole replacement Correct. is required. Right. There's, no, there's no current requirement to replace windows. Yeah. Okay. So, so this will be a a piecemeal replacement as people yeah. individually and, and you, you've seen this on many other window yeah. master plans mm -hmm. uh, in the area question um, ward will uh if uh if someone wants to replace their windows then all of the current single pane windows will have to re be replaced with uh, one over one yes okay Yes, and one over one with the right profiles and right. the proper but, volume. But are no more, I mean, no more replacement by single pane windows. No, no. Okay. Um, so uh, you asked a question uh, just a moment ago, Jay, but uh, there are two primary window sash types on the building, one over one double hungs mm -hmm. and single pane tilt and turns or fixed windows. About 70% of the windows are one over one and about 30% are single pane windows. There are no historic windows uh, on, the, on the building now, uh, but do note that even within the one over ones and the, and the single panes, there's a big variety in these windows because they were done at various points over time. What about uh, so those uh, tripartite windows? What? We'll get to those. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Don't you're you're, you're always one slide ahead of me. Actually, this time, two slides ahead of me. <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, no, no, only one. Um, next slide, please, Mark. So tripartite windows. Um, uh, the group windows, the tripartite windows were a, actually a very important organizing feature of the building. When you look at them towards the corners and how they're arranged on the buildings, they had wider mullions, uh, uh, than, than what you see here, particularly with the fixed windows. Also note that the single pane windows are generally much closer to the facade. They don't have the depth that they that the historic windows would have had, or even the depth that the double hung windows would have had. So that too takes away from the reading of the building, particularly on a building like this that does not have a lot of architectural decoration. Uh, the fenestration really becomes a big part of the architecture. Uh, so next, please, Mark. And then paired window openings, you can see that these have been heavily modified as well uh, with different, uh, different mullion types. Historically, they were wider mullions uh, and they've been replaced with narrower mullions. Uh, next, please. So these are the historic photos of the building. The tax photo on the left, uh, two tax photos on the left. Uh, showing the original configuration of the six over six windows. And you can also note if you look at those corner tripartite windows that they had much heftier mullions between the, uh, uh, between the sets of sash. Uh, and they were also set slightly deeper within the windows. The two photos on the right are from 1990, the designation photos at the time of designation. And you can see even at this time, the uh, multi-light windows that remained, most of the lower sash had been replaced. So by this time, most of the windows were six over one and the windows were starting to get replaced with one over one and uh, single pane uh, windows. And part of the reason that that was allowed to happen was because a lot of these windows had been purchased and ready for installation prior to designation. Uh, so even though they don't show in the designation photos, these are all grandfathered window conditions. Um, 
uh, in the designation photo, by the time of designation, about 55 to 60 percent of the windows were six over one, and about 15 percent were one over one, and about 20 percent were single pane. Uh, so, next slide, please. Um, one of the things we're thinking about. Or can you just the, repeat those numbers? Uh, 55 to 60 percent were six over one. About 15 percent were one over one, and a little over 20 percent were single pane. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, obviously, this is a certificate of appropriateness, and we have been uh, thinking about the appropriateness of installing one over one windows on this building. Uh, one of the things we looked at was were one over one windows used historically on this type of uh, neo Renaissance building in this period and shown on the slide here are four examples from within the district. Uh, showing various buildings of similar design, all of which were originally built with one over one windows including the one at the far right 263 West End Avenue, which was designed by the same firm Sugarman and Berger. Uh, so we think that in terms of this period building and the architecture of this building, a one over one window is appropriate uh, historically. And next slide, please. Uh, and then looking at this in the context of similar master plans, uh, I think all of which uh, came before you in the past. Uh, the, uh, similarly, one over one windows were approved for master plans in lieu of the historic configuration of multi-light windows. Uh, and that was the case across the street from us at 271 Central Park West at 87th Street, which originally had nine over one windows and the commission approved a master plan for one over one windows. And further up the, uh, uh, further up the avenue, uh, 327 Central Park West at 93rd Street, which originally had six over six windows, landmarks approved a master plan with one over one windows. The findings for these proposals are very consistent with the findings that we're putting forward for our building uh, in terms of consistency with buildings of that period and uh, date and style. Uh, and uh, obviously the one across the street is in, is in our immediate context. Um, and then next slide, please. Uh, and then this is just a, a, a more recent example from last year of a similar master plan uh, which landmarks approved the building originally had multi-light windows and the commission approved a master plan. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, in this case, architectural character was, was a major consideration for the commission. Uh, it's a similarly plain style building where the windows take on a higher order of significance that it might on a more decorative building. And this was one of the findings that the commission made in this case. Uh, and we think it's relevant because it's a more recent approval. Uh, so next slide, please. So this brings us back to the building itself. Uh, this elevation shows the windows that were approved by the commission since designation. Uh, a lot of individual uh, apartment owners have come forward uh, either at staff level or uh, through public hearing to get approval for their windows. And obviously every time a tenant wants to change their windows and it requires a public hearing, it comes before you. And as you have asked at prior uh, meetings of this committee that this should have a master plan. So that is, uh, that is the application here. I'm going to hand it over to Kevin Daly uh, of Walter B. Melvin Architects to take you through the details and the specifics on the design of the windows. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can, can the committee hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. We can move to the next slide, please. Thank you very much for having us, by the way. Um, I am um, uh, following with, with um, 
with what Ward Dennis had, had presented. Um, this is a slide showing, obviously, the, the results of a, a master plan. Um, on the left uh, is an existing elevation with the colors indicating the different types of windows that are present on the building. Uh, the light blue showing an existing double hung one over one sash. Um, a couple of different colors, red and uh, uh, light purple but, or pink, that show uh, two different types of uh, tilt and turn windows. Um, which are, um, there are a couple of different configurations. One, we believe, where the structure pans around the uh, old, the, the remnants of the old window frame, and one where the, the window was completely replaced brick to brick. Um, there are a smattering of windows that fall into none of those categories, and those are yellow. As you can see, it's a, it's a hot spot in the sense that there isn't any one particular um, window that dominates any part of the facade. Um, even in the replacements, um, the windows sometimes are very close to the, the, uh, the opening of the masonry. Uh, that is to say that the glass line is very close to the masonry line. Um, in many cases, it's, it's also quite deep. So there's a, even a sort of the, the reflective character of the building when seen along the street. Um, there's a different depth of, of pattern. There's a lack of pattern. Um, what we're hoping to do uh, with the acceptance of the master plan is to make for a consistent installation with consistent details um, so that the building doesn't look like it's um, uh, a mix of many things. It, it looks like it's a single design as it was originally. Um, again, I guess moving to the next slide, we see the north and south elevations, um, which are in the same way in each pair. On the left, it's the existing um, configurations highlighted by color. And on the right, of course, a single um, set of conditions. I'll remind you of uh, the, the slides that, uh, that Ward showed previously. Um, the triple windows sometimes vary in having thick, thin, deep, or planar um, mullions, uh, as do the, the double windows. Um, and uh, the, the molding set that's present on the existing one over one double hung windows varies from very simple panning um, to more complicated moldings, none of which really reference the historic moldings, uh, which is the thing that we're able to correct. Uh, so if you'll move to the next slide, please. Um, this is showing uh, top and bottom, the most prevalent type of existing one and one double hung windows um, contrasted with one of the two types of proposed double hung windows. Let me expand on that briefly. Um, we, uh, in this master plan, have, have compiled two sets of details, both of which match uh, the historic details as well as we can and match each other. The idea is that um, if, the, if the shareholder wishes to have a different type of interior finish, um, or especially if window manufacturers uh, change their standard details, um, we have two sets of, of windows that we can go to um, to allow for consistency on the exterior even if there are changes on the, the interior finishes desired by the shareholder, or if one manufacturer should happen to change their details, we still have another to go back to. Um, but but the, the, this particular slide is showing an all aluminum double on window, which I believe is manufactured by Skyline um, at the bottom. And that's compared with a standard uh, typical double on window present on the building right now. I think the thing that I want to point out to you most closely is one that's obvious as a result of this master plan. If we're going to the effort, to recreate a molding set, um, the, the perimeter moldings and the moldings of the mullions that separate windows in a gang window, the current time, they're very simple um, rectangular aluminum panning, sometimes going over historic material, sometimes no. The effect is very plain. Um, and, as, as a, and as a result of there being several different types of windows on the building, it, it's plain but confusing. Um, we have the opportunity and are taking it here to create a single molding set at the mullions and at the brick molds of the, the window surround all the way around the edges of the window that uh, match the historic. Uh, and then we'll, of course, even in a couple of different manufacturers, match each other. We were able to um, take a bit of the uh, existing aluminum panning off of one of the windows uh, on the street facade um, and found uh, uh, the brick mold of the original window underneath. The uh, frame uh, still remained, although the sash and sill and the mullion were all removed. Um, so it's not a, not a scenario where we could restore the existing window, but we were able to take very careful measurements of the moldings. As it happened, uh, 
a similar application a couple of years ago on one of the rear facades of the building, um, also did a probe to try and find the moldings, and they match. So we're very confident that we have um, the historic uh, brick mold, and, uh, and that's the molding that we approach the manufacturers to make sure they could reproduce. Next slide, please. This, again, is essentially the same slide, but showing a different manufacturer. This is, um, I, um, um, I want to say Anderson, but of course I'm not correct. Um, excuse me. We have a, 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 an aluminum-clad wood window uh, by a different manufacturer, um, which uh, I'm taking pains to point out, has the same molding set and the same details um, as the all-aluminum window, which we, again, believe matches the historic configuration of moldings and overalls. Uh, pretty closely. Can you go to the next slide, please? Moving into some details, um, this is three versions of a, of a planned section. So, you know, cut about midway through the height of the window, um, horizontally and looking down. Um, in all three cases, we are showing um, at the core um, the old wood window still there. As has been pointed out a couple of times, um, that's not the case uniformly. Um, however, we're showing here um, because the, the details of the new windows will accommodate the historic window, so we don't have to remove historic material where we find it, which forms my little preservationist part. Um, and uh, it does make for a consistent installation, uh, regardless of the existing window conditions. Um, at the top, in the existing double-hung window, um, you'll see uh, that the what little uh, the original frame that is there is panned over with that rectangular aluminum panning that we mentioned. Um, and the, uh, the mullion has that same condition where whatever there is is covered over by that rectangular panning. Um, the mullions are fairly wide in that first leading edge, um, and that makes for a very broad, plain-looking mullion and a very plain-looking brick surround, or brick mold at the window surround. Um, we have both of the window, the, the intended proposed windows at the bottom, left and right, um, and in both cases, we're able to get a, yes, exactly, a custom molded um, panning to go over the existing system, whatever it is, um, and that matches. Uh, you see very carefully, it, there's a couple of little fillets in a cymorecta. Um, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a simple molding, but we're able to, to replicate it pretty accurately with both manufacturers. And the dimensions that are shown um, show that um, we have roughly the same dimensions with minor variation from each other between windows. You don't believe that those will be visible to the eye. As, as uh, uh, Ward had pointed out, um, we don't have um, any of the existing windows to measure directly from. We use the multiple uh, uh, attack photos that were available to us to try and scale using you know, photo manipulation to try and get as good a sense as we could of the dimensions of the mullions that were original. Um, and we match those directly in creating the existing detail set. I believe from the, the, the work that we did um, on computer and in the field that we have a pretty accurate rendition of the existing windows. Next slide, please. This is a cross section of, again, an existing double hung window and uh, the two proposed windows. I think I would end up saying the same speech over again, but to be clear, um, the existing window is fairly simple, um, built on the, uh, sometimes on the guts of a removed window, sometimes uh, brick to brick. Um, we're able to recreate um, the molding set, um, regardless of the existing conditions, that matches the historic pretty accurately. Um, these windows, um, there isn't a lot of complexity in the sash configurations. In other words, they're generally, each sash is about a half the height of the window. Um, which is to say we're, we're being virtuous, but it's not complicated to match the SAS configuration from the historic to our proposed pretty accurately. Um, and I believe uh, that's the end of the presentation. There's one more slide that shows some tilt and turn windows, but... Um, I, I, I have a question I, 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 those... on this slide, if I may. Sure. Um, uh, if that's okay with Michelle. Sure. Thanks. Um, so I'm looking at the meeting rails on the three uh, windows here, and none of them seem to match to me, but it could just be my unpracticed eye. Um, they, they seem to be different dimensions. Uh, what, what are we looking at, and, and is that just a, uh, a trompe l'oeil or something? 
I think it's a Trump alloy based on the fact that the well, I, I will say that the that the, the chunky existing aluminum double hung windows have fairly broad, wide meeting rail, um, and that's just the the historic well, the recent historic character of uh, the, the uh, of those window sash. Um, the two um, proposed windows, uh, I, I, if you zoom in on the dimensions of those two windows, I believe that they're fairly close to each other. Um, Yeah, two and three sixteenths to uh, two and a thirty second. So they are within roughly a sixteenth of each other. Okay. Um, in terms of their the leading edge that presents themselves to to the viewer's eye. Um, of you're course, assuming. most of them are. Yeah. So what you're seeing is, of course, an, an architectural uh, you know uh, fill that's meant to show that those are the wood windows. That that may change the the appearance of it as you see the whole slide. Okay. Any other questions? Any uh, member of the uh, committee? No, I mean, just as a matter of um, policy, as far as uh, a basic determination as to whether replacement windows have to reflect the original historical configuration, our general standard has always been that if the uh, vast majority uh, of existing windows have already been uh, changed then then we're we've been comfortable with approving uh, similar uh, changes from six over six or whatever to to double home windows and obviously that's the case here so i don't think it's an issue susan we'll see you yeah sue do you have a question no no but i i, I agree with jay i mean it's sad that, that we've lost the original, perhaps, windows, but I'm, I'm grateful that there's a master plan and that the hodgepodge will be reduced, so. Yeah. Madge? Can't hear you. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and Doug? Susan and Jay, I agree with him. <laughs> Doug? Uh, just to comment, I uh, agree with Susan that it's unfortunate that we've lost the original, yeah. but it's great that we have a master plan. Um, could you explain something to me? This is why would somebody put a single pane window in 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 uh, why would somebody use a single pane window unless maybe it's the end of a hallway? <laughs> okay, you. I'll, I'll, All right. I'll, I'll handle that to get more. <laughs> Thank of you. you. Yeah. Central Park, yeah. View. Yeah, it's just a view, an uninterrupted view. Uninterrupted view. All right. It sounds like you're all in agreement with this. Um, yes. Yeah. So I, I will call, call the question. No, no, Wait no, a second. Has a question. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Not not so fast. Um, so in my building, as you guys all know, um, which is built in 1923, um, there were one over one windows installed forever, and then the LPC got wind of it and and opposed it and and required them to put back in the six over six. So you know, that could be done, but I, I think it's not realistic here. So we'll say that I, again, I applaud that at least they want to have a consistent look. Okay. You know, it could be done, but it's not going to be done. Yeah. Is there any member of the community here that wants to speak about this application? I think it's just us. Yeah. Just us chickens. Yeah. Right. So. I'll just, I won't take too much of your time, but I will remind the committee that we had an application on this building for a set of windows, more or less directly above the main entrance on Central Park West. Um, and it was controversial at the time and it was controversial at public hearing um, because the standard that we were led to want to use and sort of adopted was whether the wind, whether the, the, the decoration of the building taken as a whole was such that the um, that the loss of the multi-light fabric on the on the facade would or would not affect the overall impression of the building and 370 uh, Riverside Drive um, which our former colleague Misha presented to us and 150 West uh, 79th Street which I see when I walk out my front door um, are examples of highly decorated buildings with lots of wedding cakey features and frou-frou and so forth. 
another technical term, um, uh, that at the time we distinguished from this building. Um, the committee was still comfortable going forward with those windows above the main entrance uh, as one over one windows. I don't know how their, their, um, their profiles compare to the ones that are being proposed today. Um, but, at, uh, but at LPC, there was concern about these windows, those windows, I'm sorry, because this is the opportunity, if there ever were to be one, a master plan is the opportunity to restore the building to what its former glory should have been. Um, I am not ignorant of the likelihood that those with those tilt and turn full pane windows would keep them and probably encourage their grandchildren to keep them as well, um, rather than replace them with something that I think is more appropriate. But the question to me is appropriate. Um, I think that the aluminum is a compromise and an appropriate compromise, but I can't get myself all the way to one over one versus six over one. So I'll be abstaining on your resolution, which I somehow I'm gonna guess is gonna to be to approve. Uh, Mark, same here. Oddly. I'm sorry, was that I thought the original was six over six. I'm sorry, you're right, six over six. You're right, original was six over six, and then by the time of designation, a lot of that had been modified to six over one. And yet there are no original windows in the building. Well, there, uh, to, to be clear, when, when designation was coming down Central Park West toward the building, the building moved quickly like an awful lot of buildings did in the 1980s um, uh, to replace windows um, in advance of conversion to co-op sometimes and in advance of the, um, of the impending historic district. Um, so they were considered grandfathered even though we saw slides that showed that um, at the time of designation there were a, a fairly healthy number of, uh, of legacy windows or butchered legacy windows, not a condition I would wanna see returned. Um, but this is this is the one chance. A master plan is the one chance to say what the future should be. But I don't vote with the committee, so don't worry about it, Ward. And I also fought tooth and nail in my own building to preserve the, the divided lights. And I feel torn about this one for the same reason. Yeah. Well, maybe may, may I say? Yeah, who, who's that? I'm sorry. Yeah, this I was going to say, can taller. the applicant say, uh, explain to us why, how the fenestration will be somewhat sure. unique. Uh, sure. Now, well, the tower is somewhat, uh, for lack of, it's not as simple. The architecture, the building is not simple, not simple to look at. But so maybe you, the applicant can take over, help me out on this. Well, I, I can talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the, uh, the application from the board perspective and shareholders perspective. Okay. I mean, we're, we're very proud of this application. We're being very responsive to the request of CB7 in the past. Um, there is a long history of approving um, it, actually an inferior style uh, 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 double hung window. Uh, this has architectural elements that harken back to the building's um, original structure, the, 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 the window's original structure. Um, so we think this is a very practical and useful um, approach um, because of that precedence of 170 windows that have been approved over the last 15 years that are relatively new. Um, the other reason that actually um, I want to correct a word on, he said that, um, that the building, that the window life is about 20 or 30 years. In our building, it's going to be quite longer because we have... Um, a window maintenance program um, that the building pays for to maintain the windows in original condition. And we think it will be potentially generations until there is significant penetration of a new window style. So what a great concern is amongst the, the shareholders is that um, if a new window style is introduced and there's already many different window styles on the building, it will lead to a very chaotic uh, look for a very extended period of time, much more so than you would see elsewhere. And this is a very critical intersection. So we really think that this plan um, 
and, and it won't look good for a very long period of time because the double hung windows will be up there with the tilt and turns. Um, and, and an occasional six over six might be introduced. Um, so we think this is a very practical and useful implication uh, application for both the legal precedent as well as um, that fact that we have this unique uh, building finance refurbishment program that is maintaining these windows. And that program also sig signa signals to you how important this application is to the building. I mean, the tilt and turn applicants are willing to sacrifice their windows for this window style. They're willing to do it. In fact, two years ago, three years ago, you, you, there was an application in front of you where um, an apartment converted from tilt and turn to double hung. But if it were tilt and turn to six over six, it just wouldn't happen. So um, I, I just want to make those points on behalf of the building and why you're seeing this application from us. And, and, and I should I have can, mentioned, I can talk sorry, about Ward, yeah. give me one second. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned that I very much appreciate the detail, um, even though I can't get myself all the way there, the detail of the architectural approach and the replication of the more appropriate muntins and, and so forth is noted and, and, and uh, very much appreciated. It is far better than the slap in the the off the shelf version that we sometimes see. So let me let me correct myself there. Mark, just so I'm clear on your position, did, did uh, do you is your position that you would want to go back to six over six or six over one as it was at designation? I would go back to the original condition, which is six over six, but six I would accept six. but I would accept aluminum instead of wood. Um, just to go back to your question, Michelle, Jay, about the architecture. Same here. Jay, same here. Hmm? Um, same here. So you want to go back to six over six, but you would accept six yeah. over one? Is that? Yeah. yeah. But, I, but I applaud the attempt to have a uniform look. But yeah. Because as they say, it's a long term solution. And like this is our chance to say what should it look like. Okay. But this is sort of a modernist wanna... building in a way. It is. And, it is. and, 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 I, and that's why I don't think these uh, one over ones would harm it rather than trying to uh, go back to something that probably is not as fitting. Yeah. And you I interrupted Word, so let me give it back yeah. to Word. Sure. Thanks, right. Mark. Um, I, I was just going to uh, respond further to, uh, I think it was Michelle's question about uh, the architecture and the appropriateness. Um, as Steve mentioned, Landmarks has a 20 year history of approving one over one windows on this building, uh, including recent approvals in 2014 and 2016. And, and the commission's findings in those decisions were, were based on the fact that there are no existing historic windows. Um, uh, and, but in particular, uh, that by matching the operation and the brick profile and by maintaining the unif 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 unity of the facade in terms of configuration materials and finish, uh, it was much more in keeping with, uh, it was much more harmonious to the building it is a it is a simpler building as, as Madge just mentioned. Uh, one over one window is appropriate on the style of building. The commission, particularly in their prior approvals, mentioned the precedent of similar one over one windows on similar buildings of that period, style and design. Uh, so all of which I think you know, in particular, getting that uniform window appearance is probably the, the the paramount goal obviously of all of us here and a one over one window is appropriate for this building uh, landmarks has found it appropriate many times in the past the difference here is that we will now have a much more refined one over one window uh, as mark was pointing out the details on these windows are very carefully designed and designed to follow the original uh, and therefore it will be a much nicer looking building than the existing one over one windows uh, even if they were uniform so we think that that is appropriate to the architecture of this building and getting that uniformity is a very important aspect 
if I may add one practical aspect to this, which um, in, ter in terms of speed of adoption, which isn't necessarily a criterion that the LPC uses, um, but I wish to mention it. Not only are we talking about the idea that, um, as has been mentioned by, by Steve, uh, that the, the shareholders might be more in tune with, with uh, making the change um, with, with this plan on the books, um, the very existence of a master plan, you know, as designers, we often describe uh, to owners that as it smooths the path through LPC and makes adoption of a window as part of your renovation an easier process, um, more windows are included in, 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 uh, in renovations or changes uh, in times to come. So there's an extra reason why we could anticipate with the adoption of this master plan that the change from the hodgepodge we have currently to a more uniform uh, set of windows uh, you know, there's, there's a second reason or additional reason why that adoption might happen more quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jay. Okay, Bo? Yep. We're going, the resolution uh, is to approve as presented. Sounds like it. I'm going to call, this will be a roll call. Uh, Sue? Susan, what's your vote? Abstain. Jay? Yes. Doug? You still with us, Doug? Approve. Thank you. Madge? Approve. Uh, myself is approve. And that's it for the committee. So the resolution passes one, two, three, four. Zero one zero. Uh, okay. Non committee uh, board members present and voting. Mark? That's me, and I abstain. All right. Um, so the resolution passes. Thank you very much. When do you, you're starting this work? You're not doing well, any of the work now, right? Do you, do you have a public hearing uh, sign, lined yeah. up? We we hope we hope to have in the next month in august well september or september yeah or september um, september so i'm sorry say it again it would be in september yes okay okay then then you'll have as long as it's not oh, the okay. first tuesday you will have a full board vote to go with you ward you're you're wearing a um a uh, a sling are you okay yeah, yeah. Other than other than a broken collarbone. Um, oh my goodness! Bicycle? I, I I don't want I don't want to derail a okay, sorry. meeting into a bicycle meeting, but. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. I just got out of mine with uh, with my broken wrist, so uh, uh, empathy. Right, well. Um, uh, so we'll um, have a full board vote uh, if it's after if it's in September, um, and then if you anyway, so that that's that'll take care of itself. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Um, thank you all. Thank Have you. a great thank summer. Thank you very much. Presentation. Stay cool. Uh, you, you can too. stay. You no can problem. leave. Do we have any new business to discuss, committee? Um, nope. I don't. Uh, I, actually, let me just mention the. Thank uh, the you. Good CB8. night. Let, let me just mention you. briefly the CB8 letter. Yes, of course. Uh, which uh, pretty much tonight's discussion. So CB8 has written a letter to the Landmarks Preservation Committee, a commission, saying please don't approve any more master plans that don't replicate the original multi-light fabric of windows in any building on, in Community Board 8. And Community Boards 5 and I believe 3 have signed on to it. And I put the, I, I sent the letter to uh, our co-chairs asking whether we wanted to, but noting the previous history of having approved under certain circumstances like tonight, um, the replacement of multi-light with, or historic multi-light with, um, with replacement windows that are not. Um, so I wasn't comfortable signing, so, signing on to such a letter unless the chairs were, uh, the chairs were not, as I'm understanding it, Michelle. I, right. Kay's not here, but he, uh, but I think he replied to the email to you saying um, not so much. Right. And I just wanted to raise that with the committee and let you know that I will not be signing on to that letter um, in part because it would be duplicitous to do so after this vote <laughs> and, um, and, and 150 West 79th and 370 Riverside Drive and a few others. So um, but I wanted you to be aware that that's out there. 
Yeah, and full disclosure, I sent you that little blurb about what a master plan is. With yeah. The addition of, of, and additionally telling you there are master plans for neighborhoods. Yeah, they are, sure. So maybe that's what that community board should do, have a master plan for, they should designate a neighborhood as a master, an area where there should be a master plan. But I walked up and down a couple of streets today and I don't know how we would do that. I stand corrected, but I, I, unless we're yeah. talking about the really new building, <clears throat> I don't know how we would do that. I, I, can, I can tell you how, because my building, which is built in 1923, had um, this, the, um, I guess they're eight over eights replaced by single one over ones for many, many years. And then somehow LPC caught, cottoned onto it and they, they informed them they had to replace them all. So it can be done. It looks much better. So it, it can be done. It, it can be done. Um, uh, to Michelle's point about neighborhood master plans, that would mean that even a building that didn't originally have six over ones would have to install six over ones in order to be yeah. consistent. Well, it, um, would, it would have and, to be a pretty specialized neighborhood like Stone Street that I mentioned. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing to consider here is um, um, uh, the LPC formula and the formula that was recommended to us about judging whether or not to replace multi-light based on the presence or absence of decoration on the facade. Um, you may remember 771 um, West End Avenue, which is another building that had, it was actually in an H shape. And so it had a West 97th Street facade. It had a, it had a West End Avenue facade. And then there was a little interior courtyard facade. Um, and we approved it because it had a lot of wedding cake features and LPC threw it back. And only after, only after a lot of arm twisting, when it came back to a, uh, a public meeting, did LPC vote, I think it was six to five, by the way, um, to approve the one over ones. So it's a moving target at LPC as well. So I don't know how these guys will fare but your, your action here is consistent with other actions you've taken. So I think that that's to our credit, even if it's not to the, the commissions. Anyway. Right. We will have a meeting in August. The regular day? Um, I guess so, right? Let's okay. shoot. Well, we haven't scheduled it, but let's, yeah, yes. And let's right shoot for the have, usual day. We you have already have one application for it. Yeah. I don't think we'll have another one, but if we do, we'll find something else to talk about. Thank you very much. <laughs> you got some. All righty. Thank you all. Bye. Okay. Hey, Doug. Bye. Doug, thanks so thank much you. for joining because uh, yeah, we wouldn't have a quorum without you. So very appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah, thank and, you. Jay, thanks for taking uh, the minutes. Okay. Thank you, everybody.